How's it going? My name is Eric, and in this video, we're going to be installing the Hall Sensing joysticks for the Nintendo Switch Joy Cons. This is an incredible upgrade, new technology. It will fix your current stick drift on your Joy Cons if you have stick drift, or it will fix the Joy Cons from not having stick drift in the future. It has to do with the way that they're designed using magnets where there's no moving touching parts, which is different than the design of the original joystick, which I think has a graphite sheets in here that rub and it creates dust, which eventually creates that stick drift. I will put an index in the video of the left Joy-Con, the right Joy-Con. We're going to do this as minimally invasive as possible. And if you don't already have a ghillie kit, you can pick them up on Amazon for 20 bucks without the tools and about $23 with the tools, and I will put a link to that in the description for your convenience. And before we get into it, if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you already subscribed, subscribe so you don't miss another project. And if you wanna say thanks or have any questions, throw them in the comment section. Myself or somebody else will get back to you. Now let's get into the video. We're gonna do the right Joy-Con first. So let's grab our ghillie kit and grab one of these guys it also came with this it looks like a replacement dust shield if you damage your dust shield while removing your joystick you can replace it with the one that they include turn your joy con over you're going to take a y zero screwdriver it is a tri-wing y shape hopefully you can see that right there if you accidentally use a phillips head screwdriver you will probably strip your screws and be in a whole lot of hurt now there are four screws you're gonna have to take out, put a moderate amount of pressure on it, and lefty loosey. And all four of those screws are the same size, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up, but you do wanna set them aside so you don't lose them. Now you're gonna take something to split the Joy-Con case, like a little pry tool, work it from the corner and go around and you should be able to pry off the back pretty easily. You are going to want to rotate the back on the rail side because there is a ribbon cable that you do not want to disturb or damage, as you can see right there when I open it up. So now you're going to want to pry up underneath the battery. There's some light adhesive, so you can just get a little tool right here. There's a nice spot to pry underneath the battery and then rotate gently to pop off that adhesive. And you can set the battery to the side like that. In previous videos, I did show removing the battery completely. However, based off of some comments, some people had damaged the battery connector off of the circuit board somehow. So if, if you're not comfortable removing that, then just push your battery to the side like this. And then you're going to take your Phillips head screwdriver it's a P00, I believe. And there's one, two, three screws that we're gonna take out. And these three screws are a gold color. They're shorter than the black screws we took out earlier, but they are longer than a silver colored screw that is also in the Joy-Con assembly. Now you're gonna pull this antenna off, pull it to the side out of the way grab this battery tray. The ZR ribbon cable is attached to the circuit board, so you need to rotate it on that point of access of that ribbon cable, and then you can flip it up and out of the way like that. With everything out of the way, you can now see the actual Joy-Con that we are replacing. We need to unlock the ribbon cable connector that connects the Joy-Con to the circuit board. There's a little black lock right here and get your tool underneath it and pull it towards you gently and it unlocks that ribbon cable as you can see. It is now in the unlocked position. Now you're going to grab that same Phillips head screwdriver that we used earlier and we're going to take out these two screws that are holding the Joy-Con on. You might have to support the controller while you're taking those out because it kind of pushes on the Joy-Con. So I'm lifting it up a little bit while I was taking those out. And that allows this to push out. And these two screws that we took out are the same as those other three that we took out earlier, gold color Phillips head screws. Now we're just going to gently pull our Joy-Con out and then pull 
on that connector and it should release like that. The old and the new are pretty similar looking. The original one has a green ribbon cable. The new Gilly kit one has a yellow ribbon cable. And there are some slight differences such as indentations, um, designing of how the metal was pressed. I think this might be like the Gilly kit logo or something on the back there. Now with everything opened up, I still don't know what this little adhesive thing does. The diameter of it's not the same. So we're just gonna put that back. In my opinion, it's easier to get the ribbon cable in before you put the joystick because you can manipulate it a little bit more. So I'm gonna set it into the connector. There's really only one way that it can go. And then gently, there's a little lip on it. I'm pushing it into the connector and it doesn't go in that far. It's a very, very small amount that you push it in. We're talking about two millimeters or so. And once it's in, you can push that black locking mechanism away from you. That will lock that ribbon cable in there. Now I'm going to lift the Joy-Con up off of the ground a little bit and then gently place it through that little, there's a little, that little dust shield. And then we're going to take two of those screws and our Phillips head screwdriver. And we're gonna screw that down into place. I'm lifting the Joy-Con up a little bit while I'm screwing these in because the Joy-Con itself rests on the joystick. So I'm holding it up while I was screwing those two down. Now that the joystick is in, we're going to start reassembly and our little RR button popped off while we were doing all of that. So you wanna make sure that you get the spring of the R button, a little uh, little cross plus sign where the spring goes onto. So you're gonna press that onto there like that. And then the spring rests in this little channel. You have to press it down and get the this part of the button underneath the casing and then this part of the button underneath the casing there. And it holds itself in until you get the next layer of the Joy-Con on. We're gonna take the second layer and we're going to rotate it back towards us and turning it on that axis of that ribbon cable. Now we're gonna take our battery, get that out of the way, rotate that. And when I took it off, I rotate it. So you want the negative side to be what's facing down. There's a little negative on the battery. So you want that to be facing down in the corner there and then and then drop that right up back onto the adhesive. The positive is facing up. The voltage cables are coming out of it right here. Now we're going to take this little antenna sensor and place that back. There's a little channel right here, right smack dab in the middle of the battery that holds it. You just slide it in, holds it in uh, two little tabs at the bottom. And then this wire is supposed to route through this little channel a 90 degree angle so it doesn't get into the way. Now we're gonna take those three golden screws and put those back in righty tighty with our Phillips head screwdriver. And then we're gonna take this part of the shell, rotate it back over, press it down. You might hear a click or two. There shouldn't be any big gaps. It should be pretty flush. And then we're gonna take our four tri-wing screws, set them back in place, and tighten them back down as well. You are gonna have to recalibrate the joystick, and I actually am unable to press the down, so I have to use my touch, go to the settings gear, scroll down to controllers and sensors, Scroll down to calibrate control sticks and then tilt the stick you want to calibrate. You know how to do this, but you'll have to calibrate your joystick. You might not have full function of it until you calibrate it. So make sure you do that. Now we're going to be working on the left control stick and same thing, four screws in the back with our tri-wing screwdriver. We're going to take all four of those screws out. And those four screws are all the same. You can just set them aside. Don't worry about mixing them up. Now we're gonna take a little pry tool, get in between 
the two cases. It's easier to do it on one of the corners or the edges. And you're just gonna work that tool around creating this split. You might hear some popping. And once you remove it enough, you're gonna wanna rotate the backside on, or away on the rail side. So you don't damage the ribbon cables as you'll see right here. You wanna make sure that you rotate it like that. Then we're gonna take our pry tool. There is a slot in the side of the battery where you can get a pry tool pretty easily underneath. We're going to just get it under there, pry up a little bit of that adhesive, pull that battery off gently and pull it out of the way. Previously, I was removing the battery connector from the board, but it's just another step that you have to reconnect and you shouldn't have any issues doing it like this. Uh, there is more things hanging off the board and there's a, a small risk of shorting something out, but if you're careful, you should be fine. A lot of people were complaining that the, uh, the connector would break off of the board, so we're not going to do that anymore. Now we're going to take off three screws. There are golden screws and silver screws. So you're gonna take off these two golden screws and this one more golden screw you can see down here. And those are just the lefty Lucy. It's a Phillips head screwdriver. I think it's a P00. These three screws are the same. We're gonna set those aside. Now we're going to lift up this case layer gently. We're gonna rotate it on the axis of this ribbon cable right here that's on our LZ button. We're gonna lift and rotate it like that. And then we're going to get it even farther out of the way by twisting it that way and, and setting it aside. Now we're going to disconnect the joystick ribbon cable. And in order to do that, you have to take a little tool and flip up on this black lock. It is now unlocked and this ribbon cable should be able to pull out. You can see now that it's loose. Now there's two screws holding in the Joy-Con. You can either take your screwdriver and work it around that ribbon cable like that to get that screw out, or you can unlock and remove that ribbon cable from the connector, whichever is easier for you. This one has a gray connector on it, so you're gonna have to flick that gray connector up and this connector just pushes into that a little bit and comes up like that. If it's possible to get around it, you do risk damaging the cable if you're too rough, but if you don't mind taking them out, you can just do it this way. Then we're gonna take that Phillips head screwdriver. This finger is actually underneath the Joy-Con, so I'm able to support it off of the ground a little bit while I'm putting pressure down to take this screw out, and this one as well. It's easier that way than having the Joy-Con just rest because the joystick will be hitting the working surface. Two more of those gold screws. We can set those aside. They're the same size as the other ones so you can't get them mixed up. We're gonna pull this joystick out gently. There is a dust shield underneath it. You do wanna be careful of that. Try not to damage it. We're gonna grab our Gilly Kit Joy-Con. And as you can see, there are some differences in the look the blue versus the orange ribbon and the design on the back. We're gonna do the same thing. Grab the Joy-Con, lift it up off of the working surface a little bit, slide it through that dust shield, and you wanna make sure that this mounting hole gets under. There goes my L button, which is probably gonna happen to you. We'll reinstall that later. You do wanna make sure that you get it underneath that this ribbon cable. It should rest flush. Take two of those golden screws, lift the Joy-Con up off of the working surface a little bit and hand tighten those screws. Now we need to reinstall these two ribbon cables. This one has little ears on it. You're gonna wanna make sure that the switch is in the unlocked position. 
And if you can grab it and stick it in, you can use a tool to push on the ear a little bit. It goes in a very small amount. And once you do that, you can lock down that the gray cable lock. Now we're going to do the other one and I believe it mounts underneath this other cable. And this one's a little bit more tricky. You can move the controller towards you to make it a little bit easier. That way you can see where the hole is, but you just have to move this stuff to make it easier to see. Like I'm moving this one out of the way a little bit and it might be easier with tweezers to grab this. And once you get it lined up, you just have to put a little bit of pressure on it while holding the Joy-Con so it doesn't move. There is a little lip on this ribbon cable that you can use as a leverage point to gently persuade that into the, uh, the connector. And once you get it in about a millimeter or two, you can lock that connector down by pushing down on that piece of black plastic. Now we're gonna do the reassembly. I knocked off my L button, which you probably will do as well. The spring hopefully is still connected and didn't shoot off. It goes on to a little plus sign. This rests in here like that. There's a channel for the spring, and then you need to just get the lip of the, of the button underneath the case here and the lip of the button underneath the case there. Now we need to rotate this level of the case back like that. Make sure your battery is out of the way. And this helps to hold that other button in place, the two layers. Once you get the battery cable out of the way, it should lay flush. For this Joy-Con, the positive side of the battery goes down and the negative side of the battery goes up and the cable sticks out of the left side of the case right there. Or it's the right side of the case, depending how you're looking at it. We're gonna take the three golden screws that we took out earlier, our Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna reinstall those three screws. So two of the screws are underneath the battery. We forgot about that. So I'm gonna pry the battery back off, move it out of the way and install these two more screws. Now we can put the battery back, the negative side facing up, and then rotate this side of the controller back on, and it should sit pretty flush. You don't want any cables or anything in the way. If it's not flush, then that means something wasn't put together correct. You might wanna open it back up and figure out what we're gonna put these four tri-wing screws back in and switch to our tri-wing screwdriver to make sure that we don't strip them. Attach your controller to your switch, turn it on. It may or may not work, depending. Mine's working right now, but it's not working to the best of its capabilities until we calibrate. So we're gonna go down to settings. And if your stick's not working, then you can always use the touch controllers and sensors go down to calibrate control sticks we're going to do the left stick right now tilt the stick you want to calibrate so we're tilting that and you can see that it's not even calibrated look at that it's drifting off to the bottom left so we're going to recalibrate this one's giving me a lot more trouble calibrating than my other one did now that it's calibrated you can see much better. So you might have to try to calibrate it a couple times, maybe restart your switch. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. The Gilly kit will be linked in the description for your convenience. I highly recommend it, but I still don't know what these are for. So if you do know, let me know in the comments section, please, because I could not find what the heck those are for. And there have been companies reaching out for Joy-Con shells. I will try to get some discount codes for the shells, I will link to those into the description as well if the companies end up giving me some discount codes for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. If you wanna say thanks, I appreciate that. Throw it in the comment section. I do read every comment, even though I don't necessarily respond to every single one, but I do appreciate the support and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.